The third talk is uh, given by uh, Dr. Nobuyuki Yoshioka uh, from University of Tokyo. He will tell us about advancing variational algorithms for quantum many quantum many body problems. Please start. Okay. Uh, thank you for introduction. Uh, I'm Nobuyuki Yoshioka at University of Tokyo, and I'm very honored to be a speaker of this wonderful workshop. And I would like to thank organizers again for this. Okay, so today I would talk about mainly two topics. Uh, first one is about variational simulation of open quantum systems. And another one is variational simulation as well for finite temperature problems. And the first one would be mainly about this number one, reference number one, which is collaboration with Ryusuke Hamazaki. And if time permits, I would also refer to the work by uh, collaboration with uh, Yuya Nakagawa, Kosuke Mitarai, and Keisuke Fuji. Uh, the second part would be about uh, the finite temperature state calculation would be in collaboration with Frank Nori and Nomu Yusuke Nomura at Riken. Okay, uh, so I would first I would like to refer to this figure that I, uh, which is kind of my research motivation. And uh, I would like to state that variational simulation is a question that is uh, in the cross point of these seemingly different uh, three fields, which is uh, machine learning, quantum technology, and quant condensed matter physics. So machine learning uh, would uh, target to extract pattern from classical data. Quantum technology is some um, uh, field that aims to process information using quantum inferi interference. And condensed matter physics is interested in uh, looking for exotic phenomena from many body correlation. So all these three are like, the goals are very different, but the bottlenecks are have very similar things, which is the question of how to tame the curse of dimensionality. Meaning that if we want to solve all these problems exactly, then we would immediately uh, be uh, barriered by the in explosive increase in, in Hilbert's space or feature space in the neural network or so forth. Okay, so variational simulations of many body problems are, uh, there are two key elements in this um, directions. So first one is to define appropriate cost functions so that the operation in the full Hilbert space would be mapped appropriately into the parameter space. Uh, for example, the tensor networks or neural networks or whatever the variational state you prepared to perform polynomial uh, calculation. And the second element that which is very important is the suitable choice of parameterization of the quantum state, which captures the physics of the corresponding uh, quantum state very uh, correctly. So let's say uh, uh, we want to consider a problem where we want to get the ground state of some given Hamiltonian. Of course, uh, if you're considering many body problem, then this would end up in uh, having exponential cost for the solution. So therefore we want to uh, uh, consider another approximate algorithm so that uh, we can have the close, closer quantum state as possible. And in doing this, which is a very established way of thinking, uh, we would consider an expectation value of en Hamiltonian energy like this and choose some ground state approximate so that this uh, uh, expectation value would be minimized. So what we do is to tune the parameter of the state so that this energy GS would be minimized as possible. And from the optimal state, you can hopefully extract uh, accurate prop static or dynamical property, which reflects the physics of the system. And up to now, uh, there are many uh, uh, algorithms considered but uh, I have to say that recently there wasn't there, there wasn't a very big advance in the uh, quantum ansatz considered. And the 
recent findings show that neural networks, which were originally considered in the context of machine learning, has been uh, proven to be very uh, powerful can, uh, tool, even for this kind of quantum many body problems. So the first work which uh, proposed that kind of scheme was done by the paper of Carl Leo and Troyer, which employed a very uh, simple type of neural network, which is called the restricted Boltzmann machine. So they con considered a quantum state ansatz, which looks like this, whose quantum amplitude would be given by this type of, uh, some kind of Boltzmann distribution-like uh, function. So here, in addition to the physical spins, which actually spans the Hilbert space of the system, they would additionally consider some spins, which is usually called the hidden spins, uh, and uh, parameterize the wave function as the energy uh, two-body interaction between this sigma and h, or physical spins and the like hidden spins, and also the magnetic fields. Uh, acting on each side like this. Of course, this is not, it is not limited to two body and you can also consider interaction, three body interactions or more. But the reason here is to just keep as simple as possible for uh, uh, understanding the whether it works or not. And surprisingly, this kind of uh, wave function ansatz based on neural network is performing very well, at least for these kind of Ply models. For example, in one dimensional or two dimensional spin systems. Uh, for example, uh, and in particular for two dimensional systems, they considered one 10 by 10 uh, square lattice, which is uh, anti-ferromagnetic and Heisenberg model, and they have found that the accuracy obtained by this kind of uh, un variation simulation is exceeding the accuracy of the state of the art uh, record at that time. Although this state of the art, the tensor networks simulations were done in the periodic boundary conditions, which is not the best for tensor networks, but still this is showing a very uh, promising result so that uh, physicists, condensed matter physicists are now jump, uh, considering whether neural networks are very a thing to explore new physics. And to, uh, there are three directions doing that. First one is to improve these kind of benchmark system quantitatively and by considering advanced network structure, for example. And it is shown, uh, shown the work by the Google people are showing that uh, they can go beyond 200 or 400 qubit simulations in this type of uh, toy models. And beyond that kind of toy models, uh, there are some works that consider that are working on um, investigating the most, whether or not these kind of most exotic phase would really exist under uh, two dimensional frustration effects. So that is about improving the benchmarks. And also there are directions that tries to understand what is really happening in this neural network ansatz. And uh, unfortunately, I have to say that there are no like smoking gun evidence that shows neural networks are like very nicer compared to other ansatz. But at least uh, we understand that this class neural network class is different from what we had before, meaning that the quantum entanglement, for example, is not the limiting factor for the expressibility of this state. For example, uh, the number of parameterized required to achieve volume law entanglement is um, polynomial. And in the best case, it can be only a square root n, where n being the number of uh, spins on the system. Okay, these two are also um, indeed very important, but what I, uh, we are pursuing, uh, pursuing now is to uh, extend the, uh, the applicability of these neural network simulations to different kind of physical situations. And what we want to talk today is about the extension of these simulations to dissipative system 
and also finite temperature simulations. Okay, so dissipative systems are a system usually considering very microscopic, but uh, under the, the effect of external environment, which is usually macroscopic, so that it would uh, destroy the coherence effect, coherence of the system. Since it is very demanding to deal the whole system as a one, uh, we would uh, people would usually cons uh, trace out the environment and uh, try to uh, describe the dynamics of the system with this environment effect taken into account as some dissipation effect. So this is of course important ex both experimentally and theoretically in terms that first uh, we can uh, we want to understand the realistic physics happening in the quantum devices and second theoretically uh, there are some sorts of uh, physical phenomena that is that does not have any counterparts in isolated quantum systems okay and Although there are many types of formalism that describe this type of dissipative systems, here we would consider the most simplest one, the simplest quantum master equation with CPTP and Markovianity imposed. Uh, so that as a starting point to understand this uh, dissipative uh, dynamics using the neural networks. So the, the, the time evolution would be given both by the unitary dynamics, by the Hamiltonian, and also the dissipative effect, which is not non-unitary, but still preserving uh, effect included. So uh, under this type of quantum master equation, uh, steady states are very important because let, let's think about uh, if you wait for a very long time, it's a quantum state you would achieve after some dynamics. So there are lots of interest in steady states, for example, in context of quantum state preparation, where we want to control the dissipation such that uh, the steady state would be correspond to some desirable quantum state. So that is kind of a more quantum information oriented direction. And also there are more condensed matter oriented directions which tries to seek what kind of physics would be enriched by the presence of dissipation. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to detail, but the steady states are, are kind of ground states in isolated system for um, open quantum system. So it is the first task that we want to elucidate in this type of uh, researches. So let me go on how to calculate such kind of stationary states using variational algorithm. Uh, I would go like to decompose into four steps. And the first one is to uh, map this density matrix or the mixed state into some vectorized uh, peri uh, quantum state with doubled number of qubits or double number of electrons or so on. So you can just imagine that this uh, matrix would be vectorized into this form. Or in other words, we can uh, understand that this density matrix would be uh, mapped into a pure state with both this ket and bra corresponding to both ket state like this. So under this representation, the quantum master equation would be mapped into some linear equation like this. And uh, what is very happy, what is fortunate for us, the steady, steady state, which we want to compute, would correspond to the zero eigenstate of such a linear operator. So while this linear uh, uh, lean blood equation operator, which is the time generation operator, is not Hermitian. Uh, if we consider this type of operator, L dagger L, this would be by definition Hermitian or uh, er, Hermite. So, uh, which means that the stationary state would remain as a zero eigenstate of this operator like this, while other undesirable 
uh, state which would decay with time would be positive but valued eigenstate in the real axis. So our target, the steady state, would be the lowest eigenstate or ground state to be, uh, in a way, of this uh, new operator defined like this. So, after, so once we have op, uh, defined the optimization task, what we we have to do is to uh, input uh, choose the ansatz to be the our neural network state and run the optimization so that we can we would reach that uh, we have the, the expectation value as low as possible. So this uh, value would be precisely zero if the optimization would be done exactly, but uh, usually that is not the case, of course. And we have done demonstrations and found that, for example, in one dimensional system, uh, we can uh, we have done some test calculations and show that uh, for 32 spin systems, we can achieve more than 99.5% fidelity of, compared to the exact result. And the number of variational parameters uh, required for that kind of simulation would be 40 fold less compared to the one done in the tensor network simulations. And we can do this kind of system for also for two dimensional system where uh, exotic phenomena could be expected. Okay, so uh, uh, we have done the demonstration for uh, open quantum system and now we're uh, working on another project to explore new physics that can arise by in, uh, considering more complicated models. Okay, and so that was it for the open quantum system. And we would shortly uh, refer to finite temperature problems as well. So here we are considering with the, we, are, we want to calculate the Gibbs state of some given quantum many body system. And we calculate that kind of state by using the idea of purification, meaning that we would add some auxil uh, ancillary system in addition to the original system and uh, try to represent the Gibbs state by this kind of density matrix. And we would realize this inside uh, purified state by using that imaginary time evolution operated on the infinite temperature system like this. And to be short, uh, we find two uh, very different methods. First one corresponding, yielding the exact representation of the Gibbs state and the second, but under our limited situations where the po positive semi-definiteness of, of the state is assured. And the second one, which is more uh, applicable to any kind of dynamics would uh, yield some approximate simulation. So this one is really the, the variational simulation of the uh, finite temperature state. Okay, I would not go into details, but the idea of the first method is to use the Suzuki Tropter decomposition such that, uh, for example, decomposing Hamiltonian H into H1 plus H2, so that each uh, evolution using uh, H1 or H2 can be represented by adding and tweaking the network st structure like this. For example, for the transfer field Ising model, uh, the first step, the ZZ interaction can be realized by adding some new hidden spins between the original spins and the operation of the transfers uh, field a term can be realized by adding on uh, new deep spins in between the already existing spins and the other parts like this. So if you con continue doing this, our network would grow like this. And in the end, we would have that 
uh, representation of the Gibbs state corresponding, uh, which exactly represents the state. Okay, and uh, so this is mapping a path integral formalism where the quantum to classical uh, correspond correspondence would exist uh, exist in the system. We have also done this kind of simulation where uh, negative sign problems would arise and uh, have confirmed that this, our algorithm would work well in, in, for 72 spin systems as well. Okay, so as the time is running out, I would like to stop here and take some questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yoshioka-san. Uh, so the session is open for questions. If you have a question, ah, Okubo-san, please. Uh, thank you very much for a very nice talk. Uh, can I uh, ask you about the comparison between the MPS and your dissipative simulation? So uh, uh, what kind of the tensor network structure uh, did they so assume? Here, they were using uh, MPS, but... So uh, oh, yeah. But the system is <clears throat> in the periodic boundary condition. Okay, so so what do you mean so MPS? So a, because you consider the dissipative system, and so right, M, do you mean MPO or yeah, yeah, MPO to be okay. precise. And uh, did they assume that any uh, transformational symmetry in their on that? So, yes. So the, this 40-fold reduction mm -hmm. was uh, actually, so this proposal of the dissipation, dissipative algorithm was done simultaneously by our group and other group as well. And mm -hmm. this reduction was reported by other group. So okay. to be, to be uh, honest, I don't know about the uh, the details of this simulation part. Oh, okay, thank you. So I, at least for me, it is very surprising because the, I believe the MPS is very efficient for the one dimensional simulation, but the yes. you, yeah, you yeah. that 40 fold <laughs> parameter reduction is very huge. Okay, thank you very much. Right, yeah. Any other questions? Ah, uh, Oku Okunishi-san, please. Yes, thank you very much for your nice talk. So I have a very um, naive question about uh, your mm -hmm. uh, just uh, final slide just before one yeah okay so you demonstrated oh. uh, some uh, yeah imaginary time evolution for for the plus bus field ising model uh, model maybe uh, yeah method one. one or yeah 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 right. yeah so so I think that for the case of the one dimensional system. Uh, there is no thermal transition. So I think that the imaginary time evolution method works very well. Uh, but mm -hmm. if uh, the model has uh, some uh, finite temperature phase transition, what happens mm -hmm. on the, this uh, deep, uh, deep Boltzmann machine method? Can you, can, can you uh, deal with such a phase transition behavior properly with Within this framework, so in terms of, so we have two different methods, and mm -hmm. for the first method, I can say that uh, we can uh, re uh, capture that kind of uh, behavior uh, if we have a finer uh, time step as mm -hmm. as possible. So it can be possible that the required number of time step to uh, simulate phase transition would mm -hmm. increase uh, exponentially uh -huh. in that kind of situation. And then uh, the 
uh, the throttle step, number of throttle step yeah, would increase yeah. exponentially as well. Oh. So in that case, uh, we cannot simulate uh, very uh -huh. um, efficiently. In the case for the second one, uh, so since this is approximate dynamics, huh. uh, I cannot say anything uh, definite right now. And I think that's a very important future issue. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, so we have tested our methods in a system where uh, phase transitions are not present for now. Uh -huh. Okay. So uh, in the case of J1, J2, or yeah. uh, transverse speed Isaac model, both ones are uh, pretty kind of clear systems without uh, mm -hmm. messy phase transitions. Okay, I see. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for your question. Uh, any other questions? Uh, if not, uh, because time is up, uh, let's thank uh, Yoshioka san again. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, next, Takeuchi san, could you?